Okay, so we're solving this absolute beast of an integral again using Feynman's technique, but with a much cooler approach suggested by subscriber Violintegral. At least that's how I understand how to pronounce his username, which is a combination of the words violin and integral. And these are the these are the two things that he enjoys most, playing the violin and integrating stuff. So that's extremely cool as well. And he suggested that instead of factoring the uh, quartic polynomial x to the 4 plus 1 in the complex realm, you can factor it completely in the real realm using uh, in the following manner x squared plus square root 2 x plus 1 times x squared minus square root 2 x plus 1. Now this is just awesome because it eliminates any need whatsoever for complex numbers and it avoids any concerns you might have when jumping from the real world to the complex world once we get that function that, Feyn that Feynman's technique will spit out in terms of the variable x and the parameter. So without further delay, let's call this integral i and uh, applying the natural logarithm as in the numerator here. Now applying the natural logarithm has the added perk of uh, using the properties of the logarithm that you can now add the natural logarithms of these two factors. So this equals the integral from negative to positive infinity of the natural log of x squared plus x times square root 2 plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1 and let me fix that dx, uh, plus another integral from negative to positive infinity, again, of the natural log of x squared minus x times the square root of 2 plus 1 dx divided by x squared plus 1. Now, a simple substitution or transformation for the second integral here going from the x realm to the negative x realm will give you the integral from negative to positive infinity. Uh, rather, that will be switched up. We now have the integral from positive to negative infinity of the natural log of x squared plus x times the square root of 2 plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1, and this dx turns into a negative dx, so we can just transfer it outside. And once we switch up the limits of integration, because this looks extremely weird, we'll get another negative sign that will cancel this one out. So these two integrals are exactly the same thing. So all we have to do is not evaluate two integrals. We'll just evaluate uh, this one here. Oh, uh, missed the, integra uh, missed the uh, integral operator there. So all we have to do is just integrate this one here and double the result. All of this makes defining our integral function quite easy. So let's define our integral function i of some parameter t as the integral from negative to positive infinity of the natural log of x squared plus tx plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1, and we're interested in the case for i of the square root, square root of 2. Now, to get some initial information about your integral function, uh, its behavior, for that you can plug in t equal to 0, which gives you the integral from negative to positive infinity of the natural log of x squared plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1 dx, which can be solved using a simple uh, trig substitution. So you let x equal the tangent of... Uh, u, which implies that um, dx divided by x squared plus 1 will be equal to du, and this implies that uh, i of 0 is in fact the integral from, now let's see, as x approaches negative uh, infinity, then u should approach negative pi by 2, and the positive for the positive sign of infinity. So that's the integral from negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2 of uh, the natural log of, up here you're going to have tangent square u, which when added to 1 gives you the square of the secant of u. So you have the square of the secant upstairs divided by 
the uh, divided by oh, divided by nothing because all of this divided by one anyway <laughs> can't say divided by nothing technically so uh, all of this is just the differential element du and this can be evaluated quite easily as well so this implies that i of zero equals um once again using the properties of the natural logarithm two times the integral from negative pi by two to positive pi by two of the natural log of the secant of u, which is just one over the cosine. And again, using the properties of the natural logarithm, you can just reciprocate the argument provided that you add an extra negative sign out here. And using symmetry considerations, uh, you can study that graphically as I did in a previous video. So you have the integral, you have four times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the natural log of the cosine of u du, which is just Euler's famous famous uh, log, log trig integrals, one of the two famous log trig integrals anyway, which evaluates to uh, pi by 2, negative pi by 2 times the natural log of 2. So you have some cancellation out here and a positive sign as well. So you get plus a plus sign outside, so forget it, 2 pi times the natural log of 2. That's your information, the information that you'll, uh, the information about the function that you'll need later. Okay, so this is what we know so far. This is our integral function, i of the parameter t. We have some information about it that we can use later, and this is our target, i of square root of 2, which we have to double in the end to get to the, uh, to get the value of the integral uh, we started off with. So using Feynman's technique, we have to differentiate with respect to the parameter t and can we switch up the uh, the order of the integration and differentiation operators well in this case yes of course because there are no concerns with respect to convergence whatsoever so once you take this uh, total derivative with respect to t inside it will be transformed into a partial derivative with respect to t so you are now differentiating partially with respect to x meaning that the x terms here are constants. So that means you have the uh, the integral from negative to positive infinity and this is just a constant, right? So 1 by x squared plus 1 and if you take the derivative of this term you will get the uh, the reciprocal of x squared plus tx plus 1 and differentiating with respect to t this uh, argument here because of the chain rule <coughs> you'll be left with x upstairs. So this is what your derivative of i with respect to t looks like. And let me just write this uh, collectively, I guess. Yeah, much better. I'm just going to skip through the partial fraction decomposition because honestly, who, who has the time to watch that anyway? So we have a constant term 1 by t and we're integrating in the x world. So this is a constant times the integral from negative to positive infinity of dx by x squared plus 1 minus 1 by t times the integral from negative to positive infinity of dx by x squared plus tx plus 1. And the quadratic polynomial uh, in the denominator here can be factored quite nicely. So we have x plus t by 2 squared plus 1 minus um, t squared by 4, which you can write out as 4 minus t squared by 4. And for the purposes of uh, figuring, figuring out the antiderivative, uh, uh, we can just square the entire, uh, we can just write it in this squared in this equivalent squared form. And we immediately notice that this is an inverse tangent uh, integral here. So first up, this integral here evaluates to not pi by two, it evaluates to pi because look at the upper and lower limits of integration. So we have pi by t minus one by t times, um, so this is your constant term here that you have to reciprocate, right? So two by four minus t squared uh, times the 
inverse tangent, so arc tan of uh, 2x plus t by 2, right? You can write it like that. Uh, let me just write it better. So 2x plus t by 2, you can write it like that, divided by uh, 4 minus t squared by 2. And the 2s just cancel out. So let's write it more neatly. Uh, 2x plus t divided by 4 minus t squared. And when do you evaluate when you evaluate at the uh, at the upper and using the upper and lower limits, well, as x approaches positive and negative infinity, uh, this term here, the inverse tangent, will obviously approach pi by two and negative pi by two respectively. So you have pi by two minus negative pi by two. So yeah, that's pi as well once again. So you can replace all of this with a pi upstairs. So this is the derivative of i with respect to t completely in terms of the parameter t. And now we can recover our function i of t. And how do we do that? Obviously, we have to integrate its derivative with respect to the variable t. So you have um, pi times the natural log of t minus uh, 2 pi times the integral of uh, dt by t times the square root of 4 minus t squared. And let me just take this separately here to evaluate the uh, antiderivative, which is quite easy, uh, standard trig substitution problem. So let t equal 2 times the sine of u. And this would imply that your integral, call it i sub 1, so i sub 1 equals uh, the integral. Now dt here should be 2 times the cosine of u times du. So 2 times cosine u du divided by t, which was 2 times the sine of u. And this 4 minus t squared in the square root obviously evaluates to twice the cosine of u. So yeah, you got plenty of cancellations going on here. And... Uh, we had this factor of two as well, right? So let me just take it uh, take it here as well. Um, let me just take it here as well. So if I just multiply everything by two, that'll cancel this factor out as well. And I'm left with evaluating the antiderivative of uh, the reciprocal of the sine is the cosecant, right? Of the cosecant of u. So I didn't remember the antiderivative of the cosecant of u. So I looked it up on Wolfram Alpha and I found a very pleasant result. Pleasant because it's quite useful for the case I have here. So we have the natural log of the sine of u by 2 divided by the cosine of u by 2. And this is pretty closely related to my substitution, the substitution that I used, right? I used... Um, t being equal to 2 times the sine of u, or u, uh, the sine of u being equal to uh, t by 2. So yeah, if I multiply upstairs and downstairs by 2, and by the cosine of u by 2, meaning that I have the square of the cosine of u by 2 down here, then I can use some nice double angle formulae. And uh, this all evaluates to sine of u, right? Which is in fact t by 2. Nice. And what about 2 times the cosecant square of u by 2? Well, according to those double angle formulae, uh, twice the, uh, the square of the cosine equals the cosine of the double angle, which in this case is u plus 1. So this implies that I have uh, the natural log of... Now, what was t? t was in fact... Oh, sorry about that. What, what was the cosine of u? Yeah, I just remembered something. It did look funny. So um, this is 4 minus t squared by 2... Uh, square root of 4 minus t squared divided by 2, which you can write all of this once again as a plus 2 here and just cancel the 2s in the denominators of the numerator and the denominator. I mean upstairs and downstairs. So yeah.
I don't like saying numerator and denominator. Upstairs and downstairs is a lot more fun. And I'm having fun integrating weird stuff like this. So anyway, this all evaluates to the natural log of t minus the natural log of 2 plus 4 minus t squared. The square root of that, that is. And this is i sub 1. And now remembering exactly what the structure of my equation was, then let me just uh, bring this down. So a copy and a paste. And that's all that's required. Let me just uh, erase this. Anyway, so the left-hand side evaluates to i of t. And over here you had pi times the natural log of t. And you got rid of, you got rid of this 2. I remember that. Uh, minus pi times the natural log of t. And two negatives make a positive. So plus the natural log of 2 plus 4 minus t squared. The square root of that, again. So these terms cancel out, which is a relief because I had the uh, information uh, at, uh, I had the information of i equal to 0, which was 2 pi times the natural log of 2, correct? So plugging in 0 means that 2 pi times the natural log of 2 equals, oh, I forgot something. There was a pi being multiplied here as well. So yeah, much better. So this equals pi times the natural log of 2 plus the square root of uh, 4 is just 4, right? So pi times the natural log of 4 plus the constant of integration c that I forgot up here, but I remembered to cal calculate. So that is actually pretty cool. Yeah bad defense of myself. Anyway, you can use the properties of the natural logarithm and write this as pi times the natural log of 4. These things cancel out and you're left with c being equal to 0, which is awesome, which is awesome. So this implies that our function i of t equals pi times the natural log of 2 plus the square root of 4 minus t squared. And we were interested in the case of i of square root of 2, right? Which is, in fact, pi times the natural log of 2 plus 4 minus, uh, the square root of 4 minus, square root 2 squared is just 2, right? So you have a square root 2 here. And we had to double this, this result to get the integral from negative to positive infinity of the natural log of x to the fourth power plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1 dx. And if we double this result, again, we can use the properties of the natural logarithm. And you can see for yourself that this will evaluate to, using the binomial expansion, 4 plus 2 plus um, 2 times 2 is 4, right? So 4 times the square root of 2. So you have pi times the natural log of 6 plus 4 times square root 2 as before, only using the coolest approach possible. So yeah, I really enjoyed uh, I really enjoyed solving this integral today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.